Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Daily Word. Sorry I'm so late this morning. We continue to have some internet computer issues in this building this morning, so I apologize for being late, but here we are. It's Monday. It's May 16th. Glad you could join me for our time together. It is a beautiful Monday morning, and the sun is shining after a bit of rain last night that we could have used anyway. So thanks for joining me for this morning as we continue our journey through the Daily Word and and what it means for us and how it affects our lives and how it keeps us moving forward. So this morning's text is from Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. So Paul continues this this conversation with the early church and talks to them about peace. I got to thinking about peace. And, you know, on Sunday mornings, um, we don't pass the peace anymore. We don't go around shaking hands, um, but we have a litany. Peace be with you and also with you. world. Peace be in our midst. Uh, and the kind of peace that we talk about on in that occasion um, is peace that now helps us, I think, I hope, is my plan. Um, it prepares us for worship, this, this kind of peace that we're talking about. Um, every Sunday morning we pray for peace in the world, uh, peace in the Ukraine. I pray that every Sunday, and you know, peace in that case is the absence of war. Peace where um, calmer minds have prevailed. Every Sunday morning, I pray for families in crisis. And I don't say the words um, intently necessarily, but in some of those situations, what they need the most is peace in their families and peace to, to uh, intervene in their lives. So what does it mean then to have the peace of Christ? What does it look like? How does it how does it feel for us to have the peace of Christ? It's interesting in a couple of texts in the scripture, um, Jesus, part of what I'm going to preach on this coming Sunday, I was working on my sermon early this morning, is in the final discourse that Jesus has with his disciples, he, he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. He offers them peace knowing that going forward, you know, their lives are going to change because of the distance between him and them. But the kind of peace that, that you and I need is, is the kind of peace when Jesus then, after the resurrection, when he appears to the disciples, when they're locked in the upper room, um, his first word to them is peace. And it's this calming peace, breathing life into them kind of thing that happens. It's, it's about resurrection. It's about new life. It's about understanding that what we're living through and what we're going through and, and who God calls us to be, um, in the midst of all of that is a sense of peace for us. You know, when you go through Sydney, and I did this morning on my way to Perkins, it's chaos from the hospital going forward. And of course, you know, the road is closed and there's all this construction and all the chaos and, and people get impatient. I think what we need in our lives when it feels like life is like that, that we're just in chaos, um, we need peace, the kind of peace um, where we're fully embraced, chaos and all, the kind of peace that doesn't let go of us, you know, when the chaos is over, but continues uh, to embrace us. It's better, it seems, for us in our lives to live with that kind of peace knowing as the disciples knew that Jesus would be with them 
And immediately when he shows up to them, he offers them peace. And so for us, where it seems like solutions are, are non-existent, we desperately need the peace of Christ in our lives. We need that peace of Christ to rule in our hearts. And I think for us, the way that we get that, the way that it comes to be part of who we are, is that we ask, as Jesus gave the disciples, for the Holy Spirit to fill us as we live our lives and give us that kind of peace. But then I think there's this other thing that's crucial for us. Yesterday um, in worship, we, of course, if you were here, we celebrated baptism, two baptisms and a new member of the church. And I believe that the body of Christ is so significant when we do that and we worship together and that the Holy Spirit somehow finds its way in us in the midst of those things. Um, for me, peace comes the best, comes um, most powerfully in our lives when peace fills us and then we are bearers of peace to others. We're bearers of peace to others. And I think that's what God is calling us to. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of searching for peace, in the midst of finding just where it is that God can move in our lives, um, it is then that, that peace, real peace, comes to us and our lives can be different. Paul says that the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Yesterday morning, as members of one body, we we're called to peace. This morning, in the world, with our neighbors, with our family, with those we encounter, we're members of one body. We're called to peace. And if I think, I think if we can be bearers of peace, as we're called to be, that the world, the world can find peace then in and through us, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what kind of struck me this morning as I began my day and as I uh, emptied my coffee cup. Um, you know, this reminder that peace, peace comes in all kinds of ways, but, uh, but the peace of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit uh, moves in and through us and helps to shape us. And I hope that we can find ways to live in peace together. So that's our word for today. Ponder it, if you will. Um, seek where it is that God might speak to you in the scripture. And then know of God's love that surrounds you. And know of my love for all of you. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock.